Hello and welcome back to another episode of Physics Partner. In today's video, we are thrilled to present an engaging experiment on radioactive decay. We gratefully acknowledge Cambridge Assessment International Education for their invaluable contribution in creating the content of this experiment. This video is originally generated by Cambridge Assessment International Education. Radioactive decay can be modeled surprisingly accurately using suites to represent individual atoms of a radioactive substance. Radioactive decay occurs when either energy or particles are emitted from the nucleus of a radioactive atom. It occurs randomly, so at any point in time, any atom has the same chance of decaying or not decaying. The half-life of a radioactive substance is the average time taken from half the atoms in a sample to decay. Suites that are a regular shape and they have a letter or making on one side are suitable for demonstrating radioactive decay. Each one has an equal chance of falling with its letter or marking facing up or down when dropped from a height. Repeatedly dropping the suites and removing the decayed suites means the half-life of a radioactive substance can be modeled. If no suitable suites are available, some shaped coins could be used instead. The experiment begins by counting out 100 suites into a cup or beaker. Next, the suites are poured into the box. The suites will land randomly across the bottom of the box. Some of the suites will land displaying their marking while other will land with the blank side showing. In this model, suites blank side up represents atoms that have emitted some radiation and have decayed. Those suites that have landed marking side up have not decayed and so can still emit radiation. The undecayed suites will be thrown again. So they are picked out and placed back in the plastic cup or beaker. It is important to count the number of suites picked out. The results of the first throw are recorded in a table by writing down how many suites landed mark side up. To prepare for the second throw of the undecayed suites, the decayed suites is still in the box are removed and put aside. Now the box is empty again, the beaker of remaining suites is poured into the box again. As before, the suites that landed marking side up are removed, they are put back into beaker and counted. The remaining suites are put aside as before. The results are recorded as previously. The steps are repeated until all of the suites have been used and put aside. The last throw that is recorded is when all the remaining suites land blank side up. Now that there is a complete set of results, they can be plotted onto a graph. Using a sharp pencil and a ruler, the x and y axis of the graph are drawn. Axis labels are important. The x-axis is labeled throw number and the y-axis number of suites. The graph is given a titan. In this experiment, the suites were thrown seven times. So x-axis on the graph needs to accommodate this. On the graph paper, the points showing the number of throws are equally spaced along the x-axis. The y-axis should start at zero as the experiment ended with all suites having decayed. The experiment began with 100 suites, so the markup, the y-axis should be inequally spaced. Increments of 10 until 100 is reached. A cross is placed on the graph for every result in the table. There were 100 suites undecayed before the first row, so this is the first plot made on the graph. The other plots are drawn on the graph marking the number of suites that remained of each throw. Finally, the points on the graph are connected using a line of best fit. This graph is showing an exponential decay. It can be used to deduce the half-life in the model. After one half-life, half of the atoms in the model will be decayed. However, this does not mean that all of the atoms will have decayed after two half-lives. Instead, at the start, there are 100 undecayed atoms in the model and after one half-life, a random selection of 50 atoms have decayed. After two half-lives, a random selection of the remaining 50 atoms has decayed, leaving 25 undecayed atoms. This process carries on until all the atoms have eventually decayed. In the model, suites have been used as atoms. However, in real life, the individual atoms in the radioactive substance cannot be counted. So radioactivity is measured in counts using a Geiger counter. 
so i think it's enough for today so thank you very much for listening and watching i hope you enjoyed the video i hope this video is useful for you so take care of yourself and don't hesitate to write an email if you have any question query suggestion and even classes are required take care of yourself meanwhile see you in the next video goodbye